just in case Shep has gotten his cantrip candles sanctuary <laughs> scent <laughs> lit. Can only help. It can't hurt. It absolutely can't. The three of you are standing in the basement hallway, a nexus uh, four-way intersection. Several steps down the hall is a solid set of glass doors with two brass pull handles. It seemed to be locked. Special Reserves, Sonia Alvarez, inscribed in a placard above the center where the two doors meet. Seems dark beyond that door. Ship, Ship just looks at Ava and goes, I think we probably should leave that one well enough alone because we, she knows Glenn Mac. And if she gets upset at us, uh, Glenn Mac's going, <laughs> not going to be able to help us with things in the, in the future. Oh dear. So I, th I think we need to try to be good until we need to not be. Let me proffer this. Glenn McClanahan, you think, you feel, perhaps you know, is not well thought of among his peer group. Um, he's probably a little too expressive about his interest in the occult, in the paranormal, in the supernatural. His ghost hunting expeditions are met with anything in the, uh, the variegation between um, a smile and a sad nod and outright derision. So if indeed Sonia is, if not one of his friends, then one of his associates that shares his predilection for the unusual, it would be a shame if you were to, to damage that relationship at this juncture. If she is a resource that you could leverage in your favor at some point, for some reason, it would be a shame to get off on the wrong foot by invading her demence. And Shep, make a, make a smarts roll, please. Oh, no. That's probably not Shep's. A success. Uh -huh. So a while back, you had this vision of uh, what was going on in this classroom. A, a pair of devices similar to Tesla coils with fingers of purple and white arcing energy between them, forming almost a doorway. You were in a classroom. There were two professors, two older-looking men, trying to drag a younger man, a student probably, and trying to drag him into that doorway. And someone asked, what kind of a classroom is this? Is it a this? Is it a that? And I described it as, you know, if it was a chemistry classroom, you might see a periodic table of the elements in poster form on one of the walls. Similarly, if it was an English literature class, you may see uh, stylized posters of the, of the great, you know, Shelley and Keats and Wordsworth and Shakespeare. Um, if it was a philosophy class, then it might be Aristotle, you know, Plato, perhaps, uh, you know, Descartes and some of the great, you know, mathematicians along with uh, philosophies. Your success on this role <coughs> excuse me, indicates to me that you do recall, now that one of the gals mentioned it, the poster did seem to have pictures, and you couldn't make out the words because they were too small, but you're talking about things, and it, ap it appears to you that it was six or eight simple machines were illustrated. You know, the inclined plane, the lever, the wedge, the wheel and axle, a pulley, and a screw. This was off in the periphery a little bit, but mm -hmm. when someone mentions it, you're thinking real hard. 
what did I see? What sort of a classroom was it? I think it it gels, it tracks that these were simple machines. Dang engineers always can't stay in their lane, always trying to be like Frankenstein. Always trying. Well, let's go see if there's a student that needs to be saved from nasty professors. Oh, boy. And I let them know that it seems like it may be in a one of the engineering classes, classrooms. And I'm trying to remember, did Glenn Mac send us to a specific classroom or just a floor? Or was it the building itself? Just the building itself. Okay. Not a specific classroom, not a specific uh, floor in that classroom. Okay. If there's a classroom that you are attracted towards in particular, I will trust your judgment. <laughs> uh, let's... Hmm. So, well, are we... I still have my salt bag. You do. You have little balls, little, little, they're about the size of a, of a big juicy plum. Uh, they are that yellow crinkled paper wrapped around salt, table salt, to make a, an orb, a sphere, and then tied with some, some twine to allow it to keep its shape, its, its form. You have a wrought iron frame of perhaps a mirror or a painting of some sort of work of art that has the flare de lis corners that that very readily allowed you to attach a a stiff um, a rubber uh, belt of some type or a uh, perhaps one of those stout rubber um, bungee kind of not cords but bungee straps that you would use to keep stuff in a truck. For example, yeah, I have honey. I still have gold flakes in my vial. Um, and speaking of which, do we want to want to what? Want to do the dark site? Because it that it lasts for an hour, correct? Uh huh. I know we've used it at least twice already among which would be, we've used it technically, I think, seven, like, seven times, like, twice, like, you know, two rounds of it, because I remember doing it to Aruba when yeah. she was with us. So mm -hmm. we've done it to each, each of us has done it twice, did it to Aruba once, and I don't, so I'm just trying to keep track of, like, ingredients. Because I know I have the vial of gold, but I don't know how much gold we would have left. Like, how many okay. more times do you think would be fair that we could... One plus a d4. Just roll a d4. If it aces, we'll know it was a four. You have four more applications of gold flake. That is using the amount that you think is right and not trying to squeeze out one more casting. Now, does this particular ritual have the ability to, because um, you know how sometimes when on some of the rituals, if you cast it, if you get, if you ace your casting or whatever it is, do rituals have that? They don't have, they don't have PowerPoints. Okay. But... I think on a raise, yeah, that's, you that's could probably add something to the effect. And let me jump to the suede. Because I know some do, some don't. To be able to kind of like cheese 
another ritual out of it if you aged it well enough? Well, sometimes, because like on my um, protection ritual, if you ace it, it can, it helps with more armor or sometimes more people. Mm. Darkness doesn't seem to work that way. Okay. measuring out her ingredients she thinks that she'll be we'll be able to do this at least four more times before we run out of ingredients yeah by now four times that means four recipients right you could do all if if there were if there were hypothetically if there were four of you here you could exhaust your resources by doing it on each of them yeah okay that's good that's what i thought it's like it's not four rounds it's four people Work. Right. Right. Okay. So after we use this for all of us, we only have enough for one more person. Right. right. Cool with that. So <coughs> we can go to the building, or do, do you want to just do it here? Since there's no one else here to look at us, That's funny. That's what I'm thinking. Um. <laughs> You're no, you're no longer in the, or you are you still in the library in the basement? You think you could probably, <laughs> if if you are, I mean, you certainly can be. Um, yeah, you you think you could? If we want to leave and go straight to the building and do it in that building, or no. if we want to do it here in the basement. It's at most I a would... two. It's a two minute walk to to get to yeah. the other building at most. Okay, that's not that and. Bad. One other question, because the other thing, because of my warning, how if something has a duration of five, is that five rounds or? Because I'm thinking of of doing the protection spell. It is five rounds. However, your durations are doubled using the East Texas University rule set. Okay, so that means ten minutes, basically. Is it is it five minutes or five rounds? It was five rounds. Um, it's what, well, six, it just says duration five, so I'm not sure. Yeah, it's five five combat rounds ish. Okay. Sorry, each one is about six seconds, so I think I there know, maybe six ten, what, ten rounds in a minute. Yeah. So if it's ten rounds, then that's one minute, right? I think so. Yeah. But I have to cast the because that's that's where my confusion is because I have to cast this as a ritual. Yep. Which means I have to, it's not instantaneous. Right. You have to so, accumulate five successes in five rounds to get it to work. Although, uh, experience has taught that if others support you, mm -hmm. you can knock it out in two rounds. I think you all have done that twice. Okay. By, by acing, by yeah, support I'm rolls. Just, I'm just trying to figure out because that's a good spell, but if I can't... It's know, about it's a balancing so act, right? You don't want to do it too soon yeah. or it'll burn out before combat starts. Well, th um, that's what I'm saying. It it mm -hmm. makes sense for me to want to do it, but yes. I can't... We can wait a bit. Yeah, if we go across, it's going to burn out before we even get to the building. Mm -hmm. If I'm right. Okay. Sounds right. Okay, well, then, I just wanted to make sure. We'll do the, we can do the ritual then here since it's not that yeah. far for the for the, the dark site. So we can get that done. Um, and then we'll maybe. One left. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> if, if Senora Millie doesn't come down peeking at us because she's, you know, always looking for the chief mate. <laughs> All this gossip. So I have, I'll pull out the honey and I'll pull out the gold plate and uh, we can get this done in the basement of the library. Okay. And then we can leave. Um, so the ritual itself, I remember rolling something for it before, but I don't know if that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I have to do smarts first, right? For the dark site? 
Yes. I can't, yes. I'm trying to remember which I have to do first. I think it's a cult. I think it's smarts. Okay. It's smarts to activate it, to activate an item, an artifact. And again, oh, okay. I've, I've forgotten the, I've forgotten the word that they use to describe um, when you create a uh, an item okay. that has a spell that on it. Sense. It's it's smarts. No, it's it's yeah. spirit. I think it's spirit. spirit to activate the item. It is your occult role okay. to cast the ritual. And since it really okay. it really bothers me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up because <laughs> I, I know there I know there's an edge that you can use to. From Jack of all trades, so if I can help with that, I would love to. Talisman, talisman. I should write the word talisman down and just put it on a sticky and put it right where I can always see it. Talisman is a spirit. Role. Probably near the same thing as my bullia base. <laughs> Very good. Um, so it's going to be a five-round uh, task. And okay. you need five successes. So for round one, if indeed this is wish, what you wish to do, I'm, I'm not going to force you to. You don't have to. But if you would like to cast this Dark Sight spell here in the confines of the rather cool but, but, and well-lit basement at the Sam Rayburn Library, I will need five successes in five rounds. Okay. And Ava said she wanted to help. Yeah. I want to help. I still have a cult from my jack of all trades so i would like to try and help him with this ritual please do so or that's my assist <laughs> Yay. a success what well, would you what would you, what would you like to do sophie i'm so worried i'm gonna ruin this again no. now you as an assister if you critical fail the worst you're gonna do is give her a minus uh, you're not going to make her blow the ritual uh, I already gave him a plus one so if it gets bad at least he gets to roll even money <laughs> I, I'd like to use persuasion to provide uh, support you can do it you've done this before this is nothing you've bolstering done this. you've done it like ten times already you're bolstering his but confidence I yeah. I like it. I will let it mm -hmm. apply. Make your roll. Persuasion. Please don't mess up. It's one thing about the Savage Worlds rule set. You can never say, when it comes to your turning around, well, there's really nothing I can do. There's always something you can do in Savage Worlds. Even if it's uh, bolstering someone else's next action, you can apply uh, detrimental effects to the opponents if you're successful. Better. Um, a five is a success, so you are at a net plus two, and all we basically do is just count successes. So if you get a, say, a success with two raises, unlikely but possible, we've seen dice exploding like fireworks here in the die roller today, um, you could knock it out in one round. I think you may have done that when you cast it a second time with Ahuva as one of the recipients as well. It might have been two rounds, but... Okay, and there's the success. So where does that plus two come from? Oh, I because you said plus two. I so see, I see. I wanted to make sure there wasn't it. there wasn't an edge that was giving that to you. So no, I, I just added that because you said it was a net plus two. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I was I was wrong before. So that's a six. That is a success. You can drop a Benny and try to re-roll that. But um I mean this sort of task. Yeah. You've got five rounds to accumulate your five successes. That's right. one That's one success in one round. And I have a feeling I'm going to need some bennies with that my uh, that purse. Ain't, that ain't bad. So we'll count that as one success. Next round. Mm -hmm. I will say uh, anyone that's using a cult to help can keep using a cult because that directly applies. But persuasion, uh, I would say you would, you would want to uh, support using a different sort of skill. Okay. I'm gonna Benny that. That's better. <laughs> okay. There's a plus one. That's a success. Sophia, what would you like to do? 
you don't have to support on any given round if you're feeling unlucky. I feel so unlucky. Okay. Shep, your roll is a plus one. Round two. Sense. Okay. So I have to good luck it. <laughs> I don't know. Pink isn't doing it for me tonight. Was okay, another okay. success. That is two successes in two rounds. At this rate, it will take you just five rounds to accomplish casting the Dark Sight Ritual. Mm -hmm. So, another occult from me to help my buddy. Ah, oh, that's so close. His dice were rolling. Better. Ooh, oh. holy, That's even oh, holy Toledo. A third. Ava is feeling very, very determined today. 13. He stole my luck. <laughs> luck me. That's a success with two raises. That will add a three to your roll. And in fact, a three is the most you can benefit from. Okay people grouping together to provide you with support. So, plus three it is. I'm trying to think of, Ava, what did you do that was just that much success? I I think what you did was you, you added your voice to him speaking the words of the ritual and helped him get through some of the words that he was mispronouncing just ever so slightly. She got real embarrassed. Okay. She wanted to put that energy towards something. Well, you definitely gave me some luck energy. That's a success with two raises. That is five successes. Yep. On the third round, Ava really added her voice to yours and helped to firm or shore up your casting, your, your vocalization of this. And as you are now done, you put a few drops of honey between your fingers. And just rub them together, your thumb and forefinger, and add a sprinkling of just the right amount of gold flakes that you filed off of one of Mir's gold coins from his homeland in the Middle East. And in doing so, you quickly smear just a dab over each eye of the three of you, and you are now under the effects of a dark side spell. You leave the library, and noticing that there is nothing remotely sticky remaining after you dab the third and final um, application, uh, it, it is consumed by the energy of the ritual, so you don't have to worry about wasting time licking your fingers or washing your hands, uh, the gold flakes and the Honey um, are not on your fingertips anymore. You cross the road that bisects north-south um, the library from the R.E. Lee Engineering Building. You are in front of the R.E. Lee Engineering Building. The two statues, male and female, beckon you to enter. There are still lights on. There are still hints of activity from within. Perhaps on the second floor, a light turns on and then turns off. Do we see any lights that seem to flicker? You do not. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we go and... Do we... I look over at uh, Sophia since she is our... Resident Glenn Mac person. On your what? Resident Glenn Mac. What? Uh, oh, do you have all? Did we? Do you have everything that we need to check in on this for Glenn Mac? Uh, Meaning, I can't remember if we were supposed to actually have our cameras and stuff. I I believe we do. We grabbed, I remember we grabbed the equipment from Glenn Mac before our okay. last adventure, and we never returned it. Because, okay. uh... We still have that, technically. Cop stuff. Yeah. Rest so. and lawyers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess we have that, and I guess that's it, so let's go in. Yeah. 
Okay. Right it, it, it's a long, it's rectangular, right? It's a long, narrow building. Um, mm -hmm. Each floor is laid out in such a manner that there is uh, one long corridor that runs the entire longer dimension, and there's a stairway at both ends. You enter the front doors. Shep, you hear that that whispering, and in fact, all of you can. You're, you're like, look at each other. Did you say something? And then you realize it, it's a, a somewhat of a vocalization, an effect, perhaps just a trick of the acoustics of the building, and perhaps the wind sounds like whispering. Um, it's hard to make out. All of you make notice rolls, please. I was going to say, the, the, the sound isn't coming from anywhere in particular. Doesn't seem to be. Wow, can't read those yellow dice. They are certainly not. <laughs> they are certainly <laughs> I not. I fix that. They are not. Sorry, I didn't consider that. They are not bubblegum pink. I don't, I don't need to see the numbers. I just. Yeah, I, I, just did, I just did that. <laughs> it does. It really does. Shep and Sophia. Yeah, look at that. That's, that's good. Sophia and Shep, you both hear um, sounds of sobbing coming down the hallway from a room whose door is ajar. Uh, with a raise, Ava, you hear sobbing and you hear numbers. Numbers. Oh. Would you like to go up the steps that lead to the second or third floors? Or would you like to investigate the slightly open door? Oh. Can you talk to me again? I think you could be a ghost. That could be a ghost. <laughs> Oh, it could be a trap and we could well, die. It sounds like they're saying numbers. And when I'm sad and saying numbers, I'm studying real hard for a test that I don't want to do. <laughs> I know if ghosts are studying for tests. Okay. Are we going to Scooby Doo look through that door crack? I think we are. See what's going on in that room. Okay. And we're the perfect, we, we're the perfect ones to Scooby Doo it. Ava, Sophia, Shep. Bloop, bloop, bloop. You need a, you need, you need the Mir's doggo, Rocco here, as well. Uh, let's see. the The light is on in the room. You peer around the cracked open door. You see a male student curled up in a fetal position in the back corner, underneath one of those tables that is somewhat like wood grain paneling. It's not a collapsing table. It's a table that has those sturdy uh, chrome legs that are screwed into the bottom. So it's a, it's a sturdy table. He is curled up under the table crying. And you hear him saying, two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-three, twenty-nine, thirty-one. 13, 17, 37, 41, 73, 79. He says these numbers, and then he stops and continues to sob, and then he picks up 83, oh, no. 89, 97, 101, 2, 3, 5, 7. I'm tapping. I'm tapping them. What, what? Uh, does he look transparent? He does not. He appears fully formed and solid and material. No, Ava, that does not look like a ghost. He's got a book bag that's like on the floor, on the floor as well. <laughs> We're going to get behind them and start like gently nudging them into the direction of this poor boy under this table. Ava, your phone goes. Oh, no. It's it's making a vibration akin to the shutting down of <laughs> action, as if you selected to to, to 
power down. I see Sophia got to you too. I gotta look at it. <laughs> can I look at it and see if I can turn it back on? Um, <laughs> no, I did not touch my phone. <laughs> I did not touch your phone. How far away I just from break the everything. student are we at the moment? 16, 16 feet. 16. Okay. His eyes are clenched shut and his hands are over his ears. Is uh, Ava pushing us into the room? I don't know that Ava has the, the, the strength to really push. I, I will go into the room. I will go into the room. I'm going to stop 10 foot away. <laughs> 73, 79, 83, 89, 97, 101. Two, I'm three, five, seven. You, this is could backfire really badly. <laughs> what? His eyes are clenched shut, and there are tears streaming down his face. I'm going to check his aura. I thought you were going to say you were going to check his orifice, <sighs> <laughs> and I was just about to say that he's probably. Dang. Nah, he didn't wet himself. Well, let's just <laughs> let's just let's just make a. Vigor roll here. Oh. oh, he aced it. He aced it. He got an eight. No, nah, he didn't. He didn't soil his trousers. So I've got to do a minus two spirit roll. Actually, do that roll straight up under these particular circumstances because okay. there is so much paranormal activity occurring here. Okay, so my psychically sensitive could be bringing in the plus two then. Yeah, that's a good way to call it. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's see. I'm trying to remember. Is our reader in the... Well, actually, what am I looking at books for? It's Fantasy Grounds. I open up Chef Chef's uh, character sheet, and I go up to Maine, and I pull up his aura reader, reader and boom. I get a handy little pop-up that has all the facts. Ten feet away, make a spear roll. Straight up. A success. No. Yep. There's no question about his general emotional state. He is extremely agitated and very, very frightened. And perhaps perhaps he, more frightened than agitated. Um, is he sick or any his health? Just overall, does he seem to be normally healthy? Um, he seems to be exhausted as if he had exhausted the surge of like an adrenaline rush. And now he is feeling weak, although it's a temporary condition. Okay. So I can't, and I didn't get an array, so I can't ask any of the other things. Um, so let's go up to Mr. Scaredy Cat. I'm walking beside Chef. And I'm going to say, do you need some help getting outside this building, sir? You seem to be having a panic attack. Do you need it for us to help you? 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 73, 79. His eyes are clenched shut and his hands are over his ears. Okay, so let's try to... I don't want to take his hands off his ears, but I want to see if I can get him to stand up. He's under a table in a fetal position. It will help if you leave this building, sir. He doesn't hear you. You think that you would have to just like gently nudge him or, or touch his shoulder and shake him a little bit to get him out of his panicked state i will or you could make you could shoe. okay i was thinking you could make a loud enough noise you could slam a textbook on the tabletop to make a noise that he would hear over his no you might give him a heart attack <laughs> i could do that oh my gosh i nudge him with the tip of my boot where do you nudge him on his foot Basically, my Doc Martin is like trying doing that little. 
slight kick to try to get him to realize that somebody's if if possible he curls up into an even tighter ball and if possible he buries himself even deeper into a corner just about three inches farther away from you and i say you think we can roll him you can move Uh, the table uh, you don't have to i'm just saying the table is not in any way attached to the floor I'm just trying to think of a way. I'd... There's a yardstick if you would like to poke him. I'm not going to poke him with a stick. I'm going to call from the doorway. What's going on? It's nothing. <laughs> it's fine. He's just severely traumatized. I mean, this room is well illuminated, too. Um, that guy look like, looks familiar. Like, is he in any of my science classes? Is it Larry? No. Larry is far too robust. and he- he's, a, I, he's too healthy of a specimen. I'm just saying he is. He, there is a master. Uh, 11, 13, <laughs> 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, <laughs> uh, 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 41. Can I throw a softball at him? No, he, don't throw a softball. the... Does there seem to be a pattern to the numbers? Is he repeating any? Sounds like he is. You tell me. I bet it's five. <laughs> Two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-three, twenty-nine, thirty-one. He stops at a hundred and one, and the cycle continues. Okay. I, Notes. Something I've, I've I have seen this pattern before. I just can't think of what it is as a player. <laughs> Two, three, five, seven, eleven. What was the other one? Okay. Two, three, five, seven, eleven. I know a hundred and one is one of the numbers, but I just yeah. Know- He's repeating them. Hmm. I always do that. Open up a notes, type in the uh, title, and then I think that I've clicked down into the text area, but I've not, and it appends stuff to the uh, to the title, and it, it shouldn't. I've added number. Actually, let me just call it number. I have no idea what it is. I don't think Sophia would know this. No, I think she would. No. <laughs> I think she. I think she would. Prime numbers. Prime numbers. Yeah. So we know he we know he's trying to do he's doing a coping mechanism with prime numbers to blot out the whispers is my guess. All right. Uh, I I think for for recognizing the pattern, for recognizing the coping mechanism, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I think a Benny is going to float from the heavens and land nestling gently into each of your trays. Now, I I look over at Sophia and go, do you have, do you have, do you see any roller skates, something we can put on him (laughs) to move him out of here? Um, Or are we going to leave him here? You could drag him. By the cuffs, of his, over, the cuffs of his jeans. You grab him by the shoes. You're grabbing him by the shoes. Okay, yes. so you, you bend over. You realize if you stand up, you're probably going to bang your head on the bottom of the table. He's he's we're, we're he's stuck in there. He's stuck in there pretty good. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna drag him out. Like, hey man, we're you're okay. We're gonna get you out of here. Let's just just go. I mean, it's a okay. cool, so it's I, a cool I, tile I grab surface. To Sophia's waist and start pulling her. Pulling him. You think it'd be more effective if each, each of you grabbed a leg, a cuff, <laughs> his ankle. But if you wish to do it that way, that's fine too. 
Okay. Just watch After your watch just just watch your hands. Seeing all this shenanigans going on over there. They're pulling at this guy from under this. I was gonna say make a strength roll, but I'm not going to you easily <laughs> since it's a cool tile, a relatively frictionless surface, and he is clothed um in, in cloth or denim, uh, pulling this individual who's not exceedingly large out from under mm. the table will have two effects. Number one, it will get him out from the table. Number two, it will cause him to open his eyes and um, he probably releases his ears enough to grab onto the back corner leg of the table. So in effect, you're pull- you are both pulling him, which is pulling the table as he's still, still kind of under it. But he sees that you're, he sees your regular people, so he lets go and lets you shimmy him. Let's get you out of here. Get you away from the voices, and that will help you. We need to get you away from the side of your panic attack, sir. Do you hear the whispering? Do you hear the whispering? Yes, I hear people. There's people whispering. Let's, Let's get you away from where you had your panic attack, sir. It'll help. He gets up and uh, has the presence of mind to grab his backpack, and he will permit you to escort him out the door. And we stand at the door and wait for him to leave, go down the steps, and run off to his dorm room. He says, I I heard the whispering, and my friends didn't think it was anything. They didn't hear it, but I heard it. And um, my name's Will, by the way. And... uh, they, they didn't hear it, but I, I, I ran. I wanted to get out of here. It was, it was unsettling and, and, and scary. And I got down here to the first floor, and I heard the voices again. So I hid. And to make the whisper stop, I drowned it out by um, repeating numbers. That was a good idea. Now, where were you when you first heard the whispers? What, what room? Do you remember? Um, I was up on, up on the third floor. Um, okay. Yeah, he yeah he gives you a room number, you know, three twelve. Thank you, Will. Yeah. Go go and rest and get over your fright, sir. You guys We're are awful. Go check on this. You're awful brave going in there. Uh, no, if it's brave. <laughs> We we are contractually obligated by the <laughs> by a uh, by the archaeology slash science building to make sure that this building stays free of weird noises. You know, okay. nothing nothing to be proud of. We're we're just going to try to get see what's going on, what could be making these noises. Okay. And, Listen, well, I mean, I, I was up there with my friend Stan, and uh, we were making photocopies of some um, test material that we sh- probably shouldn't have had. But anyway, he he didn't come down with me. If you see Stan, can you get him out as well, if he's okay? Okay. Can you describe Stan? Um, oh boy. um sa- sa- sandy blonde hair, a uh, little little chunky. Wearing a red sweatshirt. Does this to the dean? Does this sound familiar to mm. Shep? Mm. No, I mean it could be any one of twenty-five people that you pass well, casually I'm during, during the course of your day. My my vision. No, no. Okay, okay. Well, if we see no. him, we'll, we'll make sure to tell him that. Uh, you left for the day, and that you need him to, you want, you need, you want him to come and find you, so you can just have him, have him give me a call. Let me know he's okay. Okay. And make I sure, and, and, and make sure he didn't leave the uh, the tests out where they could trace it back to where we stole. I mean, where we got them. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> I did not hear that. La, 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 la. I did not hear anything. You guys are heroes. And he scampers away. <laughs> okay. Um, There's another one in here. There's another boy in here. <laughs> there will always be well, boys. You know, I'm the so boys sorry. are okay. If it's one boy at a time, you don't take a minus. 
<laughs> so how did how is your your phone, Ava? I want to check it and see if I can't put it back on. That I totally didn't touch. It comes right back on. <laughs> no, she didn't do it. It comes right back on. You're outside. By the okay. way, you're on the front steps. You're between the statues. No, no. The last time it really uh, made a noise that you weren't expecting was uh, in Manz's house. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's. My phone is fine outside. It seems. Yeah. Me... So go back in. Let's step back inside. I'll hold on to my phone and kind of look at it. Starting up. Loading applications. Downloading updates, 5%, but say even in 2017, it took a while <laughs> for an update like that to happen. So I'm going to leave that in my pocket and my bat, my uh, <laughs> one pocket, Tamagotchi in the other pocket. <laughs> my shoulder strap bag hanging with me. Let's let's go see. Take the lead, friends, as there is another boy in the building. <laughs> okay, so let's go and look. Yeah. So three, we'll go up to the third floor, and he said three twelve. <clears throat> Gosh. Oh, he's gonna be cheating. He's gonna be cheating. He's such a do you think that's why all the good grades went to to people that knew the test? Maybe that's what brought the the curve down. <clears throat> I don't know, but these cheating boys are causing problems. Are you going to tell on grade. them? I don't know them. They're not in my class. We, I do not condone cheating, friends. Okay, so you go up the um to the second floor. The entrance to the second floor has a door, a solid fire door level of door. But there is a glass encasement, a tall rectangular thin window that you could peer through to see this long hallway that leads down to the you know down the second floor, um, and you sense that uh, this is probably plexiglass or tempered glass as it has those little crisscross metal strands of wire that strengthen the little window. Um, as you ascend the stairs, you see this door, and then you want to go up to the third floor. Just everyone make a notice roll. Did I get the plus two for my notice? No. Okay. I'm just wow. reminding you because of the... Oh, of by all means, remind me. I am as fallible as the next chap. Um, well, that's the weird thing is because it yeah. has to be against spirits. So. Everything in here is, is lit by those sort of fluorescent lights that hang from the ceiling in long bands with those long tubular fluorescent lights. <clears throat> that and the color of the tile and the color of the brick walls give gives everything a a a tone, a um, just a view of, of like whiteness. Everything is crisp and white. You sense something that seems a little more colorful all the way down the hallway when you look, Shep. Uh, the gals that got raises see variegated colors coming from a doorway. You see the colors, you know, like all oh, the colors of the rainbow. You know, the, 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 hearkening back to Lucky Charms, you see all the colors of the rainbow. <laughs> Blue moons, yellow stars, green clovers. You see greens and yellows and reds and scintillating patterns. It's muted. But boy, those were good rolls. And we'll take our last break. <laughs> 